and this is going to be a pre-lab screencast on the Catalase lab. All right, so this is one of the dirty dozen labs for AP Bio, so it is really important that you're sound on this because you know for my class you're going to get an essay question on this on the next test. So as you guys know, and I know you remember, enzymes are protein catalysts, right? So they are chemicals that speed up chemical reactions without themselves being used up. And the enzyme that we're going to be studying is an enzyme called catalase. Now, ASC, the ending ASC, always means enzyme. And in the new way that we name enzymes, the first part of the name of the enzyme should be the substrate that it works on. Um, but unfortunately, there are some older enzymes that um, did not use that system, and catalase is one of them, and so we just kind of grand for, grandfathered that in. But catalase is the enzyme we're going to be working on today. It's something that's found in the cells of most living things. It is a very common enzyme. We're actually getting our catalase from beef. So I'm, I'm buying it from a biological supply company, and I will have it made up into a solution. It comes as a powder, and it's going to be sitting on ice for you when you get into class. So what does catalase do? Well, catalase breaks down a chemical called hydrogen peroxide. H2O2 is the formula for hydrogen peroxide. And it breaks it down into water and oxygen, all right? And this is actually a decomposition reaction. You'll remember from chemistry that a decomposition reaction is a reaction where you have one substrate, and then on the reactant side of the equation, you're going to have several products. So our substrate is H2O2 hydrogen peroxide, and our enzyme is catalase. So hydrogen peroxide is a pretty simple molecule. It's two oxygen atoms and two hydrogen atoms. And as it turns out, um, we actually make hydrogen peroxide as a waste product in some of our metabolic reactions in the cell. And hydrogen peroxide is a very strong oxidizing agent. That means that this stuff right here likes to grab electrons from other substances. And that can be dangerous in a cell that's trying to maintain homeostasis. This is kind of like an unpredictable guy to have around because he might steal your electrons. And so the cell needs to get rid of hydrogen peroxide, needs to get rid of this because it is, um, it's dangerous to have around in the cell. And so it should not be surprising that most cells make catalase, which is the enzyme that breaks down hydrogen peroxide. Now, you are familiar, I bet you have this in your, in your bathroom medicine cabinet. Hydrogen peroxide we use as a disinfectant um, on if we have cuts in our skin. And um, that makes sense because hydrogen peroxide is a strong oxidizing agent. If there were any bacteria around, it would destroy those bacterial cells. And we know it's working because it produces those little bubbles. And those little bubbles are oxygen bubbles, right? Those are, that's oxygen bubbles and water. Now, if you've ever tried to put hydrogen peroxide just on your uncut skin, you don't see any bubbling, right? And that is because the surface of your skin does not have any of the enzyme. But if you get a cut below just the epidermis layer, then you will um, be exposed to the catalase that is normally in, your, um, in those cells. So how could we measure the rate of this chemical reaction? We want to measure how fast this reaction goes. We would have three different options. The first is we could measure how much H2O2 is left at the end of the chemical reaction, okay? We could measure how much water is produced in the chemical reaction, or we could, produce, we could measure how much oxygen is produced. So right away, in my mind, I'm thinking, I have oxygen probes that are in my lab, and I could 
do this reaction and measure with my oxygen probes the amount of oxygen that is produced in the reaction over time. That could give me the rate. The other thing that I could do is I have gas pressure sensors. So I was, if I was doing this reaction in a closed vessel, then I could put my gas pressure sensor in and it could measure the amount of gas pressure that is um, increased as oxygen is produced. I could measure it that way. But in this lab, our technique is we are going to use another titration method and we are going to measure the amount of hydrogen peroxide left over. And we're going to use it with a chemical called potassium permanganate. That's going to be our titrant. And it's a beautiful purple um, chemical. It's a liquid, it's a solution, and it gives us a nice color change. So um, one thing I will say is don't wear any nice clothes on this lab day. Don't uh, wear anything white. Um, because if you get even a little tiny drop of this on your clothes or your skin, it will stain and no amount of Tide to go is going to help you get that out. So um, wear your clothes carefully when you do this lab. So what we're going to be doing is a similar method of what we did in our Winkler method in our dissolved oxygen lab. We are going to titrate a known amount of our lovely purple potassium permanganate and we're going to get to an endpoint. Our endpoint is going to be a faint light brown color. Okay, And obviously we would want to do this on a piece of white paper. We don't want it to be purple. If it goes to purple, um, then you have, you have overshot your endpoint. We just want it to be a faint brown color that's persistent. So when you're stirring, it stays. Now, we could use um, burettes like you see over my shoulder here but that uses a lot of chemical and so there's a lot of waste and it's a lot more expense what we're going to do is instead of using a burette we're going to use a syringe again we have a very graduated amount that we can measure here of our titrant um, and you'll see this is all brown it, it turns brown because of the potassium permanganate so just like what we did in our other titration we are going to have a known amount of the hydrogen peroxide solution that we always measure. It's always going to be five mils. So you can use another syringe to pull out five mil mils, and you're going to do your titration in here, or you could use a graduated cylinder, pour in five milliliters, and then you're going to pull up a known amount of potassium permanganate, and you're going to add a drop, swirl, add a drop, swirl, add a drop swirl, add a drop swirl, right? And you're keeping track of the volume you used when this turns pale brown, but it's persistent after you swirl, that's your endpoint. So then you would read the volume of the potassium permanganate that is left in your burette, or in this case, our syringe. And you need to be able to read this accurately. All right, so I'm going to ask you to pause the video real quick and let's say you started with this volume of potassium permanganate and you ended with this volume. I want you to tell me what is the volume of potassium permanganate that was used in the titration. So you can pause the video and check that real quick. And you're right, it is 0.6 milliliters. So one of the things that I want to point out is in our last titration, we were very careful not to get any oxygen, no bubbles in here, because that would have affected our results in our Winkler method. In this particular case, the dark purple of our titrant chemical is hard to see against the black of the syringe um, stopper there. And so I'm actually going to tell you to pull up a little air this time. I want you to pull, suck up a little air first and then put it in your potassium permanganate and, um, and pull it up. Because then you will be able to see a little bit of air between the black of the plunger and the dark purple of your chemical and you'll get a better reading that way. So one of the procedures that we're going to do is we're going to do a timed protocol. How much of the H2O2 is left at so many seconds into the reaction? And so you might ask yourself, well, how am I going to do that? How am I going to stop the reaction at 10 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds? 
because once you add the catalase, you're off and running. And the hint is we're going to break the catalase, right? We're going to break the catalase at exact times in the protocol, and then we'll measure how much hydrogen peroxide is left at that time without having to hurry through the titrations. And how are we going to break this? We're going to break it with acid. So we're, you're going to be adding sulfuric acid at those particular times, intervals, and that sulfuric acid is going to denature our catalase. It's going to change the three-dimensional shape of the enzyme, and it's, not, it's going to be broken. It's not going to work anymore. And so that's how we're going to be able to get um, a timed protocol at those certain times. I'm going to ask you to calculate the rate of this decomposition reaction. And you're going to do that by putting time on your independent variable and the moles or the amount of your product on your y-axis, okay? And that is going to give us an indication the amount of the potassium permanganate that is being used is going to give us a direct measurement of the, of the hydrogen peroxide that is left over. For AP Bio, you do not need to know the actual chemical reactions that let that happen. I'll probably put that on the board for you, but the AP folks say you don't need to know that. You just need to know the amount of the potassium permanganate is basically equal to the hydrogen peroxide. So then you should recognize this, right? This is slope. Change in Y over change in X. So you're going to pick two points on your line and you're going to measure the rate of this reaction. Notice that it is going to stabilize up here at a certain time. It's not going to go any faster. Um, and uh, we'll talk about that later when we talk about um, enzyme reactions. So there are four parts of our enzyme catalase lab. Part A is pretty silly, actually. We're going to look at the effect of boiling the enzyme. And I'm going to do that as a demonstration. It should not surprise you that if you boil the heck out of catalase, you're going to break it and it's not going to work, and it's not going to break down the hydrogen peroxide. So boiling heat is another way to denature an enzyme, all right? So that's part A. In part B, we're going to determine the baseline of the amount of hydrogen peroxide in our solution. So you're going to take your 5 mils of your hydrogen peroxide solution, into our titration cup. You could also use graduated cylinder. And then you're going to titrate it without the enzyme. So you're not going to put catalase in it. You're just going to find out how much hydrogen peroxide is in there. And you might say, well, Mrs. Foy, it's 5 milliliters. Uh, no, it's not, because this is not 100% hydrogen peroxide. Okay? So we need to find out how much hydrogen peroxide we had to start with, obviously, to figure out how much is left over. In part C, we're going to do the uncatalyzed rate of decomposition. So I don't know if you've ever noticed, but if you have a really old bottle of hydrogen peroxide left in your medicine cabinet and you try to use it on a cut, it's probably not going to bubble. And that's because hydrogen peroxide, if you leave it um, just to its own devices, is going to break down on its own without the catalyst. It um, happens very slowly, but um, that could happen. And so we want to know, well, what is the uncatalyzed rate? What is the super slow rate of the decomposition of H2O2? And so you're just going to leave your sample overnight. In our case, it's going to be a couple of days because of the crazy schedule that we have right now. But then you'll do it again and find out how much you have left without the enzyme. And then in Part D, this is our big time trials. So we're going to have all these different samples of hydrogen peroxide, and then we're going to add the enzyme, and then at, we're going to add, at those certain times, 10, 30, 60 seconds, you're going to add your sulfuric acid to break your catalase, and then you'll get the reaction time. Again, you need to go to this lab bench activity, Pearson Lab Bench. Google it. You should have it uh, bookmarked, sorry. And this helps you go through simulations of all the required AP Bio Labs, and um, it gives you a little quiz, and it definitely is important you should do that. That's all I have for today. I'm excited for you to do this lab, and I will see you in class. Hope this has been helpful.